Now let's think about what we're going to do in building the strip. So our wizard guides us to the strip tools and in particular we'll start nesting. Of course nesting means how can I arrange the part in a way that's going to help me to uh, get the most out of my material. All right. So it could be one part, it could be multiple parts, it could be multiple rows of the same or different parts, plus you can reorient these parts into whatever uh, way you want to so that you get the most out of it. Notice as I bump things around my scrap area, my blank area is changing as I go. As I change my progression, notice again the scrap recalculates. So always I'm being updated to know how much I'm using, what's being involved here. And then with that, let's look at the strip dimensions, the overall size that we're working with. Uh, maybe for here I'd like to bump this up a bit so they have side uh, room for the side carriers that I'm working with. And the, the idea behind this is to basically on the fly create the strip. Uh, what do I need to do? That's what I'm going to do at the time I need to do it. There's no set rule as to which order I go in. Here I'm defining the number of progressions. Let's say we want to go with eight progressions to start with and see how that looks. So that's going to give me my first glance at the overall strip size that I'm working with. Okay, that being said, I made room for the carriers. Well, let's deal with the carriers then. Now, many shops will standardize what they want in particular to deal with when it comes to their carriers. Here I'm just grabbing from a library a carrier, dropping it into place. It's got everything in as far as the dimensions there. If I want to adjust it or change it, that's what I'm going to work with. So it could be whatever you want it to be. Plus, as you need to make changes, you can easily make those changes. So the first thing we're going to now deal with is going to be the pilot. That's the first particular feature involved in that I'm going to cut into my strip. We'll define the pilot hole, define where we want our pilot to go, and then another one across from it. And let's carry this out on the strip. So as I touch it, it shows me all the locations possible for where that pilot can start. When I pick the start point, it carries it on down the line. So with one touch, I now have the pilot location and there it builds it. Now that works for all the different punch forms I may work with. Let's go and create another punch to illustrate that. For instance, um, right in here I'm going to define uh, where my punches, I'm going to use three of them in this area, but I need to define where they overlap. Uh, creating the first punch, I merely move into the area and pick it and say that's where I want my punch to be and with that I get an on to fly punch, simply pick and punch and I've got the results I need. Of course it's not just that curve that's so important but I need to also be able to set the radiuses so that I get a good avoid a shear edge condition. There's the punch. Now let's define where it's going to go. Pick the first location and down the line it builds its locations for me. Okay, so Let's continue on. A few more. We need to do this area next. Again, just pick. There it is. You got your punch. Set where you want your different radiuses to be. And these could be the same radius as you see me picking along the back wall. You could define different radiuses as you need to. For instance, right here it narrows. We'll make this a different radius. There is the shape I'm going to work with. I like the location. That's what I'm going to use. And there's my second punch quickly you can see how it's updating and how the strip is beginning to take shape. A couple more quick little picks and like that this middle punch is beginning to come into shape. Again the radiuses. A couple quick picks to define those. There you have it and define where we're going to position it. Of course everything here is fully editable. If I need to move location I can simply go back into that feature, reorient where the location is going to go. Well we've got a few more things to do so we'll do a couple quick little picks in these areas to get the clearances off the carrier so that this is an expandable carrier. Again pick and punch right there. Finally, our last one is going to be this shape, radiuses included. You see how I'm working in what it feels like a 2D setting, but I'm doing this on a 3D model, which really is giving you the best of both worlds. 
there's my shape, there's the location, and there's the punch. So all this is information now that's going to be carried over into tool design as well. All right, now we're ready to bring the forms in. So let's clear the areas where we don't need the flat. We're ready to drop forms in these other stations here. With that, we simply go, pick what we want, tell it where it goes. Again, pick, there's your form. Couple more picks and we will soon have it. And I've got one station here and finally we have one more to add. So in just a few seconds those forms are included. All well and good but now you're saying well that's fine but eight's not enough. Uh, perhaps uh, I've sent this off to my customer, he's looked at my strip and now he's telling me that he thinks I need an idle. Well, I'll simply step back to my dimensions, add another station, as you see here, it updates. We want to now say to relocate a few of these, and it's just a matter of selecting it, bumping it over, and then finally we will add an idle, picking whichever geometry we want to include that. Again, no rule on when this can be done. It's all very updatable. Maybe it's another form. I simply pick a form, do an operation of the unfold, bring it into the strip. It's very much on the fly. Do what you need to do to get it done. And we find that it's operating in a very timely fashion, as you see a lot of work.